Today, I'm here with Small Business Stories with Donovan Rasmussen from Fergus Falls, Pelican Rapids, Battle Lake, Minnesota. He is the owner of Lake Area Docks and Lifts, and uh, we're glad to have you here, and I'm anxious to visit with you and learn about your small business story. So, um, first of all, uh, Donovan, tell us a little bit about your background, your education, what you had, have done prior to starting this business. And first, I should ask, how many years have you had this business? You know, actually, this year is number 15 we've been in business. Wow, 15 years. So prior to your 15 years, what did you do? Well, I uh, I was I farmed west of Fergus, and I also worked at a company called Shoremaster, which is kind of our primary supplier for the products we sell now. Um, I worked there as a plant manager, and my last uh, job that I did there, I was a sales manager for Minnesota, Wisconsin, North and South Dakota, and Canada. Was it glamorous when you started? How did what, What's the story there? My brother started selling boat lifts in a road ditch. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, 15 years later, there's five stores. And Let's just talk for a minute about that moment when you did walk out of your steady job, though. How, what were those feelings, and, and what kind of courage did that take? Well, you know, at least we had had a couple years under our belt, so maybe not as much courage as I thought it did, but it... It's still, you know, all of a sudden you don't have your, uh, you don't have your paycheck, you don't have your vehicle that you had at your other business, uh, you don't have your retirement and your insurance plans, and I mean, there's a lot of things that a bigger business that I come out of offer you that small businesses have a hard time doing. So that was probably, uh, you know, you got a couple of kids at home and a wife, and <laughs> that, that makes a difference too, you know, <laughs> compared to living on your own. When you made that that jump to leave your job and, and your paycheck at Shoremaster, were you able at that point to take steady pay out of, was your business grounded enough by then? Yes, you know, we we really uh, probably timed it just right, just really the boom. So, you know, we probably could have made a living the first year. Um, the only thing that happened is that we were able to buy more properties, build more buildings and expand our business to four locations that we owned in a short period of time. Um, so, you know, it was kind of, uh, we worked pretty hard. I mean, I would say if you don't have that self-driven um, motivation, uh, don't get into business for yourself. Because if you're the type of person that can't wait to get out of work to go golfing, you won't be any different when you own your own business. You're, you're going to have to put in a lot of hours. I'm, I'm still coming home late after everybody else is done. Yeah. So you mean this is way more than 40 hours for you? Yeah, yeah. We used to, you know, when we first got started, I remember working all day, loading trucks all night and working all day. You know, not often, but once in a while, and you just, that's what you got to do. But I think, I've known in the past people that said, yeah, but if I had my own business, I'd work harder. No. You know, I worked for Fleet Farm 30 years ago. I worked hard for them, too. And you won't, you won't change when you own your own business. It's just a trait you have to have. What made you think that you could run this on your own? Well, you know, I had a quite a bit of experience, and Jeff did too with Shoremaster. And, and the guy that owned Shoremaster, he was pretty open thinking. He, uh, he let you, uh, he had a real open management style and let you kind of run your business and in, in his business. And, you know, if you did something wrong, he'd let you know, but he also gave you the, the range that you could make decisions on your own for his business, which I think carried over there real easy. So when you started, it takes quite a, a number of different skill sets, um, both to know your product, how to sell your product, how to do the books, how to, did you have a business plan that you were executing right away or? Yeah, um, you know, my wife did the books. Um, we did put together a business plan. Um, it was interesting. Uh, one of the things that the guy that owned Lund Boats at the time told me is he said, it's more important that my salesmen more, know more about a Lumacraft than Lund. So one of the things that we learned being dealers, we actually got more skilled on what our other competitors were selling. And I think when we went in the off season to help Shoremaster, that was a huge benefit that we knew, we probably knew more about our competitor's product than anybody else. When we talk about the profits in a business, um, talk about profit versus cash flow versus uh, what you do with the profits? Well, I have two experiences there. You know, even when I was with Shoremaster, just like in our business, we had great profits, 
but we had so much growth that you really were broke all the time because you were growing so fast. Um, so that's better than growing without profit, but you also got to learn to manage your cash flow. And that probably is what helped us the most the first couple of years when we didn't have to take any cash out of the business to live. It enabled us to grow faster because we, we not only had profit, but we were able to keep the cash in the company. So, so you kind of plowed your profits back in, right back into it. Yep. Do you still, how many years was it before you felt you could take some of that profit to actually maybe change your lifestyle? You know, I, I think we were, you know, we, we were pretty conservative the first six, seven, eight years, I think. Um, but then we were able to pay ourselves, but we never really did, even to this day, go overboard on that. We pay, I pay myself a reasonable wage, um, and my brother runs his business the same way. And at the end of the year, the profits you have are what you have. You know, there's other people that, you know, when I got into business, the one thing I kind of forgot is that you're not only making a living for you and your family, but you're making a living for other families too. And, um, you know, with ups and downs in businesses, that's probably the hardest thing you ever address is all of a sudden if you have a slump in business like we had a few years ago here, um, you know, there's people you have to let go that are your friends. Uh, just because you have to readjust your business plan because now the sales aren't there. And then, you know, when they come back, you feel good about it. But boy, when you have to make those tough decisions, that's no fun. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Yeah. So um, tell me about the staff. How many people do you have uh, at Lake Area Docks and Lifts? Um, you know, we'll probably have 20 or 25 here. My brother kind of the same way in the Brainerd area. Um, and then full time, I suppose we got three or four. Um, so it's definitely a seasonal business. We employ a lot of kids. It, it's kind of fun to watch them come out of high school, go all the way through college. You know, I got kids that work all the way through Concordia or NDSU that are teachers now in Fargo that come down and work every summer for me. What's the most important trait you look for in a, in a staff person? You know, if they're willing to work hard, the rest you can teach them. It, it's hard to teach work ethic. How has owning this business affected your family? Um, you know, it's, it's, I used to be home probably more year round and now, you know, in the summertime, which I think is good. My wife would probably argue that I, th I think it's good that sometimes I can't make it to everything. I think the kids realize that dad's doing this and this is what he's got to do. Uh, in the winter time, I don't miss nothing, but in the summer, because it's so seasonal, there's things that there's track meets I won't make it to. And there's different things I can't make it to, but that's okay. Cause you know what? That's what life is. So they better learn it young because it'll be a bigger shock when you get out of college going, what do you mean I can't leave at five? Especially if you're an owner, you know, you got to get the job done. Yeah. What skills, what personal trait do you think it takes to be successful in a small business? Well, I think work, work ethic is number one. Um, I think the ability for me, I think the ability to be smart enough to know what you're good at and what you're not good at. And don't be, feel bad, don't, don't spend a lot of time doing things you're not good at. Do what you're good at and things you're not good at. If it's bookkeeping, hire those people and do what you do well. Was it difficult for you to make the, the uh, transition to really looking at the numbers as a business owner to say, let me see what's happening and how often do you do that? How often do you evaluate where you're at? Well, the good thing with computers, <laughs> now we can do that weekly, daily. Um, when we first started the business, you couldn't. Um, then it was probably harder, you know, I hate to say it, but you really didn't look at to see how well you did till the end of the year. You know, now we can pull up, and I think my brother even does that more. He's seven years younger than me, so I think he's on his computer every day and, and seeing where sales are and where margins are and, and stuff like that. So I, I would say we look at it, you know, weekly. Talk to me about um, about how you handle the risk in this business. Do you do you, I imagine with the kind of inventory you have, you have lots of dollars out there, um, and your relationship with lending institutions, that sort of thing. Um, uh, the company that we work with mostly, Shoremaster, had an interest free free floor plan that really helped dealers have product on hand. Because in our business, if you have it on hand, you'll sell it. If you got to wait a week to get it from the factory, you won't. Um, so that was a blessing. But you know what? Um, now it's probably tighter. But again, we had most of our growth when, I mean, I can remember calling up a bank and saying, we're going to build a store. And they said, send us the bills, we'll pay them. 
you know, I don't know if that would work right now, <laughs> just because I think they've tightened up, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, but I think it was different. So it was pretty easy for us to grow. Mm 